Our oceans are infinitely vast, complex, and diverse ecosystems that are home to the majority of the Earth's biodiversity. Measuring and monitoring the physiochemical makeup of our oceans is paramount in protecting and preserving this really important resource. Three of the most vital, life-sustaining characteristics of ocean water are temperature, salinity, and dissolved oxygen. Ocean temperature not only affects marine organisms, but it also has a huge influence on the Earth's climate and weather. Salinity has a big impact on organic matter in the oceans as it influences how water is transferred through their cells. And dissolved oxygen is how animals with gills use um, is what animals with gills use for respiration and is produced by photosynthesis of marine plant life. So examining the ocean surface at this global scale, we see some changes, some clear patterns over space. Um, but the ocean is a very complex place, and we have many dimensions to account for. These ecological marine unit data sets are almost as vast and complex as the ocean themselves. So we're not only looking at where things happen over space and where things change over time, but we have to consider another really important dimension of the ocean, which is depth. So how can we make sense of all of this data? Let's employ some uh, data visualization techniques to explore these different variables. I'm going to start by making some uh, charts here, exploring water quality by depth. So if we look here at these box plots, I have separated the different depth levels by color, with the lightest blue being the, the surface layer of the ocean and the darkest blue being at the bottom of the ocean. So we see here for temperature, we have a, a temperatures are warmer near the surface and colder towards the bottom, and they de decrease progressively. Uh, salinity is the opposite. It has highest values near the, surf, uh, near the bottom and lowest values near the surface. But dissolved oxygen kind of has a funky relationship, where the top layer of the ocean and the bottom layer of the ocean have the two highest values. So to make that a little bit clearer to see, let's take a look at some scatter plots. So here we have dissolved oxygen by depth. Um, and so you can see that the highest dissolved oxygen levels are near the surface, um, but the lowest ones are kind of in the middle. If I take a look at salinity by depth, we can see um, that relationship that we would expect with the um, lowest values near the surface, and then the exact opposite for temperature, where we have um, highest values near the surface. So this is um, a way of looking at these values in data space, but we can also look at depth with using a third dimension, so visualizing these in 3D. So let's zoom in to the coast off of Los Angeles and explore some of these variables in 3D. So here we have ecological marine units, and right now they're just symbolized by depth, again, with the lightest blues near the surface and the darkest blues at the bottom. But we can also look at these different variables and how they vary over depth and space. So salinity, for example, we can confirm what we see here in our chart, the lowest values near the surface. Uh, another way to look at this, perhaps, would be with a bar chart. Um, looking at the salinity bar chart um, over depth, we do see that it increases over depth, but the change isn't that drastic. All of the values are kind of um, pretty similar in the higher 30s. Next, we'll take a look at temperature and how that varies. So again, that relationship that we can confirm here with the highest temperatures near the surface. Um, if I create another visualization for temperature here with this bar chart, we can see that the change is actually a lot more drastic than the change in salinity by depth. And I can actually interact with these charts as well. So I can select the um, highest temperatures and see where they fall on my map. 
And then lastly, let's take a look at dissolved oxygen and take a look at that relationship also in a bar chart. So we see the highest values near the surface, and then we kind of really drop low in the middle here, and I can select these areas and see where they correspond in 3D in this map visualization. So now that we have a better understanding of ocean chemistry over space and depth, let's take a look at some ways that we can explore variations over time. And to do this, let's take a look at the Monterey Bay Marine Protected Area. So marine protected areas are put in place to protect marine diversity and um, habitats and ecosystems. And measuring and monitoring water quality are crucial for research, maintenance, and protection of these precious resources. So in this area, I have individual records of water quality samples that were measured over several decades. So let's start by looking at temperature. We're looking here just at surface temperature values over many decades. And as we all know, temperature really changes with time. So let's take a look using a bar chart to see if uh, temperature has been changing year to year. So looking at this chart, we see we do have some variation year to year. But really, with temperature, it's more of a cyclical phenomena, right? Um, we see more variation probably within years than between years. So I'm also going to take a look at these measurements over uh, months. Oops, that's the wrong chart. So let's do month. And I'll take a look at these together. So one thing that I can do is filter these interactive charts. So I want to see if these warmer months have been changing year to year. So I'm going to filter the year chart by selection and then make selections in the month chart so I can take a look at how June has changed year to year or September. Now, when I was looking at this data and I was looking at how Septembers have changed year to year, this year really stuck out to me. 1958, the median temperature was 37 degrees Celsius. That doesn't sound right to me. So what I did was I went and made a histogram of my temperature values to kind of get a better idea of what's going on. So I'll look at temperature here. And we see that everything kind of falls in this little bell curve distribution over here, except for a couple of values that um, were really skewed. And taking a look at those, I put two and two together and discovered that they actually were recorded as Fahrenheit. So I went back in and I calculated, I recalculated those values to Celsius and added a new field here. So now if I take a look at the histogram of my newly corrected Celsius values, we see a lot better normal distribution of temperature as we would expect. So these data visualization techniques are not only useful for understanding um, what's happening in the ocean, but also for measuring if your data is healthy and correct. So coming back now, if I uh, readjust these charts to look at the appropriate temperature measurements, we can see that we'll no longer have that um, year that's really sticking out in uh, September. But we still can see that Septembers have changed over time. Though another thing to, to note when looking at these data sets is that we don't have measurements every year, and we don't have measurements every month. And so another important thing that we can do with data visualization is see where we have holes in our data collection to make sure that we are representing the whole area and getting adequate information. So I've been looking at um, these changes over month to month. Another way to do that would be through uh, a range slider. So I can actually see the map update as well as the charts as I cycle month to month. So starting here in January, we see our measurements. And we can cycle through the chart updates as the uh, map updates. And we can take a look at those different months. 
Um, another measure we might want to take a look at is oxygen. So with temperature, I was just looking at the surface since we really understand that temperature values decrease in kind of in a linear fashion. With oxygen, we can take a look at how this changes month to month, year to year, and by depth. So I will take a look at our year chart here, our monthly chart. Uh, and depth. And actually, we don't need the monthly chart since we're, since we're using a range slider. So now we can see how dissolved oxygen levels have changed year to year by month. And we can see the relationship of the dissolved oxygen by depth and how that changes over month as well. Some of the colder months have a little bit of a curvier relationship than the warmer months. So these are just a few ways that I can use data visualization to explore the ocean, to monitor its health, to help protect and measure these different really important attributes. Um, I've looked at changes over space and time and through the depths of the ocean. Uh, let's return to the surface now. And um, Kevin is going to show us some workflows for calculating and summarizing the home ranges of marine mammals.